Hi guys, let's take a look at the cost volume profit analysis graph. Now I want to, you to go over this graph slowly and make sure that you understand everything um, that this graph represents. Everything that's um, going on on this graph you need to understand rather than memorize. So take a deep breath, bring up the infographic in front of you and follow along and you can make notes as, you, as well. But the important thing is don't memorize anything. Try to understand and when we look at the example here at the top, try to understand how this is represented on the graph. So the first thing when you see a graph like this obviously is to take a breath and relax and the next thing that you do is to try to figure out what the two axes represent. So the x-axis, that is the horizontal line, the one that lies flat, is the activity level in this case, so the number of units. And the vertical one, the y-axis, is sales, revenue and cost. So there's two variables on the y-axis, sales, revenue and cost. So let's first look at the example. So we assume the following information. We've got a selling price per unit of 100 and then variable cost per unit of 60 and that gives us a contribution of 40 per unit. They give us fixed cost at 300,000 so we can calculate the break even. So that was done here on the right hand side. 300,000 fixed cost divided by a 40 per, um, per unit contribution gives us 7,500 units. So that's the break even point. So let's see how this shows up on the graph. So the, f the first line I want you to look at is the, the total revenue. So total revenue, you can see starts here at zero. That makes sense because if we don't sell anything, we're not going to earn any sales revenue. And then it increases in direct proportion to the number of units we sell. So as we sell more units, so as we move to the right on the X axis, our revenue increases. Then if you look at the total cost, so that's the second line here, what type of cost is this? So it increases as we move to the right on the x-axis. So as we um, produce and sell more units, we spend more. So there must be some variable component. But then it intercepts the y-axis at 300,000, so not at zero. So there's some fixed component as well. And that was given, the 300,000. So that's the fixed cost component. So if we don't produce um, any units, so X is zero, we still spend 300,000. Now the break-even point. So the break-even point, so if you think of uh, income statement, so we've got sales less uh, variable costs, less fixed costs equals profit. So when do we break even? If our profit is zero. And then when will our profit be zero? if we earn enough sales revenue to cover both our variable and our fixed costs or our total cost. And you can see that here, this is exactly what happens here in the middle. So our total revenue or total cost is exactly the same as our total revenue. And that is then our break even point. Another way to look at it, if you, if you think of our earlier examples of calculating break even um, when our contribution equals our fixed costs we also break even so if our sales less our variable costs equals our fixed costs we'll make zero profit so how do we see that on this graph so how much would our sales be at the break even point so our break even point is 7500 units and if we follow this dotted line there and we read off the sales value, that's 750,000. So our total sales is, is represented by this vertical line that I draw here. So that's total sales. How do we calculate uh, total contribution? So remember, contribution is our sales minus our variable costs. So what is our variable cost here? Remember, total cost is also this, this distance here, up to the dot there. So our variable cost must then be our total cost less our fixed cost. So this portion is our fixed cost. So this portion here must be our variable cost. Now, sales less variable cost equals contribution. 
So sales less our variable costs equals contribution. And there you can see that's the same as our fixed costs. So I know this is a lot of scribbling and take your time to, to make sure that you understand um, what this graph represents. Yeah, it's unlikely that you're going to be asked in detail um, to draw this graph or to explain anything on it, but it's a good test for yourself to see whether you understand what's going on in, and when we do break even analysis. And then lastly, something um, important to mention, the relevant range. So in this case, let's assume it's between 7,000 and 9,000 units. And that's usually our normal operating levels or operating capacity. So if we go above 9,000 units, we might exceed our manufacturing capacity and we need to incur additional fixed costs. So below 9,000, we're within capacity, so our fixed cost stays fixed. And then if you look at the lower end, um, the 7,000 limit, if we go below that, we might not get volume discounts um, when we buy our input materials, and then our variable cost per unit might increase. So we've got a, a range, a sweet spot between 7,000 and 9,000, um, in which our fixed cost stays entirely fixed, and our variable cost per unit stays constant. Okay, so that is cost volume profit analysis on a graph. Make sure that you understand everything that's going on on this graph and not just um, don't just memorize it.